Hey, welcome back. Hey, we're ready for the final match. Are you ready? Yeah. I don't know if I am. This is, this is too exciting. <laughs> we have, again, uh, Paul uh, Heaver versus Daniel Taylor. We've got two world champions, Paul in a different game, but uh, he is runner up for Imperial Assault, so he's no slouch in this game. Yeah, so we're going to see them play against each other. Um, so something interesting, just real quick. Um, I was talking to Paul yesterday mm -hmm. during the Swiss rounds, and I, I talked to him. Uh, He's doing pretty well. He was undefeated at the time. Um, asked him if he was playing Imperial Assault and X-Wing, and he said, yeah. And he said he actually had only played a few games of X-Wing since Worlds last year. Oh, really? Um, he said, you know, he, he's, he's won X-Wing a number of times, and he still wants to do well. But for the first time, he decided to put most of his effort into Imperial Assault. So he's been testing and playing really hard so for this. So it sounds like he really wants to win this time. Yeah, definitely. Um, so. Here are the players. They're already set up. Um, they're pretty much ready to go. One thing of note here is um, normally rounds are 65 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, but here for the final match, we give them a little extra time because we know it's a, we know people tend to spend a little bit extra time thinking. Um, and we don't want the match to come down to you know, uh, one point difference just because uh, we ran into time. We want to give them as much time as possible to win an actual game. Um, so we're getting started here. Yeah, uh, one thing we're going to see this time that we haven't seen so far is a uh, devious scheme is going to come into play. Uh, we've had a number of players with that in their list, but because they both had it, it's canceled out. Um, and what's that? That's going to uh, force an opponent, opponent uh, to start the game with initiative and deploy first. And so Daniel is the one with that card. So mm -hmm. Paul is going to have to start. Um, one of the big reasons why players like this card a lot is because um, it's often kind of viewed as uh, going, taking initiative first is kind of weak because the first round is about setting up, right? Yeah, it's first, uh, if you deploy first, you don't know necessarily where your opponent is planning to go. Yep. Uh, seeing where your opponent places their figures really helps you see what their plan is for the match. Um, the other thing is, Initiative second round, I think, is a lot more helpful because at that point you'll be lined up to attack. Agreed. Yeah, that's really when the firefight starts. Um, so interestingly, I think Daniel's in the same spot. Um, we, so this is the same map we saw in round one. Um, it's Jabba's Palace, but is the other um, the other mission, new ownership. When if, uh, some of its rules. When a figure enters a space containing a neutral mission token, that figure suffers one strain, and then its controller places it on or as close as possible to the space containing the rebel mission. I hmm? Yeah. Um, and then the door to the Rancor, Rancor pit is locked to figures in interior spaces. A figure can attack the door to the Rancor pit. Um, it has health of eight and a defense of one. And then there's one last ability, right? Yeah, so... At the end of each round, uh, players are going to gain four victory points for each stash they control. Those stashes are uh, denoted by, I believe, the, the acrylic tokens out there, whereas the white ones, the cardboard ones, are the neutral tokens, where those are the ones that are going to take you over to the rebel one. Yeah, those are the, the entrance. Rebel one. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so oh, what I was uh, actually about to say earlier, I think Daniel is actually playing, he's starting in the same spot he started last time we saw him here, right? He was on that, I believe he was on that side of the yeah, board. Yeah, I think he was. So I don't know if he's happy about that since Paul got to choose. I don't know. I don't know, um, but Daniel seemed to make the most of it last time. So we'll see here. Um, these lists are a little bit different. Um, Paul, yeah. Paul has some bigger hitters, you know, we, the Bantha we saw yeah, earlier. Yeah, the Bantha, which I don't know if the Bantha will be quite as useful in this map as the last map. There's a little bit more room for Daniel to maneuver around the Bantha. Um, he can go for the main room. He can go into the Rancor pit if he wants to. Yeah, um, I, I, it's, it's still a little hard to maneuver, but there's definitely more space. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, it'll be interesting to see how Paul tries to use that to his advantage. I mean, he clearly won... Um, back in the top, the round of top 16 with it. So he, he clearly knows how to util utilize it. Yeah, I think it's still going to be very strong. Um, but I think Daniel's going to work hard to not group up. You see in the uh, 
main room, but there's a little more room for him to space out his units. Definitely. Um, some other differences, we've got um, Paul Heaver, as we saw earlier. He has Vinto um, and Jabba as well, which uh, Daniel does not have either. But Daniel has Shyla and Greedo on, um, on his side. So this is going to be a little bit of a different matchup. Um, all figures we've seen in multiple mm -hmm. lists today. Yeah, we've seen, I think, the Weequay Pirates in every list today. Yep. Yeah, they're the big popular yep. one. Um, and they both have Onar as well. Mm -hmm. And um, one thing of note, again, Daniel has two Weequay, as we saw last round. Paul only has one. So it worked out for, for Daniel last time. We'll see if it works out again. Um, I think... I think I don't know. I don't know who has the advantage here. There's, it's not a straight, straight um, trade of a weak way pirate for a Gamorrean guard, right? So it's a little bit different this this time around. Yeah, there's a lot more variety between their two lists. They do have a lot of overlap, but I think kind of their primary uh, attackers are a little different. Outside of the weak way pirates, you're going to see a lot of uh, difference in strategy. Paul obviously is going to focus on getting the bantha out there quickly and trying to attack as many figures as possible. For sure. Daniel, will, we'll see if he wants to take down the Bantha right away. Um, if he can, that'd be great for him. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Having four weak ways will definitely help him do that. Um, looks like most of the figures have been activated in, in this first round of uh, setup. Uh, Paul still has Onar and Beast Tamer. Um, and Daniel still has a couple, looks like Greedo, Shyla, and I can't make out that third one. Not the weak ways, not Gideon, probably Onar as well. Yeah, I think it's Onar, Greedo, and Shyla left for Daniel. No surprise there. He used his, he probably used Gideon and C3PO early, and then, yeah. um, and then probably, you know, set up the weak ways for next round. Interestingly, I see a, a weak way over on the left there. So he's he's not going as aggressive around the corner as he did last time. He's clearly set up for the door this time around. What do you think about that? Yeah, he has a lot of units right by the door. It could be that he wants to help. <laughs> Greedo Here we move go. again. <laughs> Same as last time. Yeah. Um, it could be that he's prepared uh, in case Paul moves into that space to then swarm around through the back. Not a great attack. Yeah, um, one canceled surge. Yeah, I mean, so he, he got lucky with Paul's defense. Paul did not have a great defense Yeah, neither either. of them rolled too well. Um, it's like they're discussing it right now. Yeah, I think looking they're at range. double checking range, but he clearly has it. He's got four on the dice. He can always add more if he wants with those surges. He's got more than enough surges, so that's not an issue for him. He does, however, if, if he does have to use a surge, then he only has one extra surge for um, his other stuff, which I don't think he has to, but that would make him choose between bleed and two extra damage. So it looks like... Is it five away or four? Um, I'm trying to count. So he has... I think, I think it's four. Yeah, he innately has plus one accuracy. He's going to play Blitz to get an extra surge anyway. Yeah. So he's just kind of... So he must not have had range then at that point, which I'm not sure about, but it, otherwise there's no point in playing Blitz because if he had range, he wouldn't need, uh, he wouldn't need the accuracy, wouldn't have to spend a surge on the accuracy. And that weak way took six damage. Yeah, that's not too bad. Or four damage. I think it was four damage. Um, yeah, it must have been four because they have six health. Paul is confusing us. He's got some of the uh, damage tokens that are three and five, so you can't just that, assume. That was our confusion last time. Yep. Yeah, we double checked that afterwards. So Paul's trying to figure out what to do next. Activating Onar. He's kind of deep in there, but he looks like he's going to come out and attack yeah. Greedo. Why not? Yeah, he looks like he's not going to open the door. I think that's the right move. Yep. He's, he's not set up for it either. He's, no. he's pushed so many things off to the right there. It looks like he's going to hang out there and not go further in, which is probably a good call. Mm -hmm. 
And he, he gets the terminal, so they both, the both control terminal at the end of the round. And he was counting out spaces for his own Onar. He's currently deep in there behind the door, I believe. Yep, there it is. Is he going to open the door? Is he opening? Uh, uh, nope. Okay. Well, at, least that's, at least right now he's not. Looked like he might for a second. Yeah, then. it looks like he was considering it. He was about to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's worth it right now with them both positioned around the corner. Yeah, I, f I feel like you're only the only reason to open the door is if you want to go go over and claim um, claim the objectives. Yeah, and get the stash. Right. I don't know if it's worth certainly not with Onar to put him in the rancor pit. On no, his own. yeah, that's that's a waste of resources there. Um, so interestingly, compared to the first the first uh, round we saw in the top sixteen. You know, players were getting two victory points for each crate their figures were carrying. They could carry multiple crates, but it was only two per crate, so it took a while to get up to four. Whereas here, as long as you control a stash, you get four right away. So I think there's a little bit more incentive to uh, go after them, would you say? Yeah, I think so. Um, the other difference with this one, though, is you just have to control. Right, you don't have to pick it up. You see the Bantha just moved in. Beat up the uh, beat up Greedo a little bit. So um, looks like was the Bantha maybe the Bantha was not uh, activated at that point. Yeah, he must have used Gideon or C3PO. Probably used Gideon to move him. Yep. Anytime you get a chance to move a Bantha for free, that's that seems yeah, good to me. Definitely worth it. I believe Daniel's activating Shyla right now. Yeah, I think that was his last. So we're getting to the point where we kind of see how the setup is going to play out. Assuming no tricks, Daniel's going to get initiative. Do you think Paul is right in moving the Bantha out there? It leaves it open, but it also blocks off Daniel's attack on anything else, right? Yeah, I mean, the advantage is he's going to be able to potentially attack a lot of uh, Daniel's units next round. Um, the biggest problem, though, is I think Daniel's really set up to attack the Bantha pretty easily. Right. So I don't... I mean, he jumped in there with Shyla. Shyla wasn't going to do much other than move around, so he jumped in and nabbed a stash for four victory points. Yeah, which is great for him. Um, it's four, I th I four think, points, right? Yeah, I think I think this could be a pretty close match, so those four points could help. Really, right now, they're mainly both set up to attack, though. I don't know. Neither of them seem as interested in going after the points. No, they're just going after Black Market, and he gets uh, Mitigate off of Black Market. So as we see every game, this Black, black Market is just, um, just giving card advantage um, just continues to to give whoever has it. In this case, it's only one player, but um, you know, getting them free command cards each round. Which, as we've seen, command cards are keep swaying these yeah. games. Yeah, command cards are very very useful. Um, and sometimes he is uh, spending points to get it, but ultimately, I think it's it's been worth it every time. Yeah, it's mostly been damage, and it's mostly been going on Jabba and Greedo for most of the lists. Which which. That's Why fine. not? Particularly on Java. I mean, yep. again, he's sitting in the back. He's not really going probably to get attacked. Um, so there's no harm in just throwing the damage on him. Definitely. So it looks like they're looking at movement points. Um, I, I guess Paul was trying to play something? Yeah, it looked like Must Daniel have. just played negation. I didn't see what Paul was playing. Oh, maybe he tried to take initiative? Yeah, possibly. I wish I'd seen that. Oh, well. Um, oh, so Daniel's about to get a shot off on the Bantha from around the corner. With a weak way. Just a normal shot, though. He's not, not focused. Doesn't have as many focus tokens as uh, he did last round. Yeah. He opened the door and got a shot. 
And then this one's going to come in. This one is focused. Mm -hmm. So this would be an example of when I think it is worth it to open the door. He got two attacks off of it. Yep. Definitely. And he had set it up, too. If you noticed, his one weak was next to the door, so it yep. did not have to move. That's key. So that's six. That's a pretty good attack as well. It's 10 damage on the Bantha right there. Or, sorry, well, 14 now. Or six, yeah. 16? 16? I see 16 is on. 21 health. Oh. Squad Swarm. So he's going to immediately activate his uh, second group of weak way pirates. I think he can maybe kill the Bantha off. Yeah. If he's lucky right now. I mean, he might even get kill it off with one of the weak way attacks and then maybe even get a shot on something else of Paul's. That'll really hurt for Paul if the Bantha this, Rider goes down before yep. it's even had a chance to attack. Yeah, it's, it's dealt a teeny bit of damage to Greedo and that was about it. Yeah, not... I mean, again, Greedo, I don't know how useful it is to attack him. Yeah, I mean, like, you, you want to eventually get rid of him, right? Because yeah. otherwise he's going to keep attacking you. Yeah, he's you, annoying, but, but I mean... Yeah, is it definitely you? You're more incentivized to attack somebody else for sure. It's gonna bring in another weak way. That's not gonna be enough to take it out. Uh, well, actually, with the surge, he might be able to, right? So the surge, I think he can get plus two. That'd be five. Five. I think that takes him to the that Bantha to twenty-one. Oh, he has assassinate. assassination. Okay. That'll do it. That'll definitely finish him off. So that's a big swing there. Yeah, that. That has to hurt for Paul. Yeah. He does still have uh, weak wave pirates. He does still have Onar, but the Bantha Rider was a pretty big part of his list. It was. Um, that said, if I'm Paul, I think. And Dana's going to get another weak wave attack, which is pretty good. Yeah. Um, but he also has activated most of his heavy hitters at this point. He just has Shyla and um, Onar left, pretty much. That's true. I don't. The match certainly isn't decided yet. Paul has room left to maneuver around, and as you said, he's going to get a lot of activations without uh, Daniel having much room to retaliate. Yep. Looks like Daniel's going after Onar. He's attacking Paul's big guys. Um, they're not able to defend with dice. Just trying to pile on the damage quick, get rid of the, the guys that are going to be damaged to him. Yeah, if he can take down Onar too, that's not going to leave Paul with a lot left. Nope. No, as we saw against uh, in uh, earlier round against Ira with Paul, um, Ira managed to knock down both in one turn, and that was a big swinging point in the game. It almost gave Ira the match. Yep. Paul's match is, I think, a lot more reliant on those two figures, whereas Daniel isn't relying so much on any one particular unit. If somebody goes down, he still has a lot of other options left. Definitely. Paul's going after the after Shyla, which mm -hmm. makes sense, trying to take her out before uh, she can attack. Played wild attack. I believe it lets him add a die. To attack, they're rolling. Whoa, look at that spin. <laughs> yeah, so Wild Attack is going to let him add a red die to the attack pool and a white die to the defense pool. Okay. So we saw that. That worked out for him. Um, I mean, it is a little risky because the white yep. die always adds the potential of just completely dodging the attack. Yeah. Um, in this case, it, he basically traded an extra damage for a surge, which, depending on your point of view, isn't, uh, isn't a bad trade. Daniel was able to cancel out both surges. Paul rolled. However, he's still got four damage up, and I think he does have the extra surge. How bad a spot do you think Daniel will be in if Shyla goes down? Uh, I wouldn't worry too much. Um, I mean, he's basically traded Shyla for the Bantha, and I would take that trade pretty much any day. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> um, Paul forced him to re-roll white die, which is going to let him surge extra, get a little bit more damage in. Sila has, was it 12 health, I believe? Yep, she has 12 health. So I don't think Paul's going to take her out in this hit. It doesn't look like it. He's not moving to remove her. She also automatically cancels one surge. Looks like maybe six damage was put on her, and here comes the other weak way. Let's see. 
Yeah, she can also recover a point of damage at the start of her activation. She is not activated yet. Right. Paul really wants to take her out now. Oh, that one damage, depending on how much damage he gets in here. Ooh. Well, that was a good defense roll. That's, that's also not a bad damage no, roll. No, if uh, Paul's oh, making, oh, oh, Paul tried to make him re-roll, which might have been able to been enough to finish her off, but. He rolled same. maximum yep. defense two times in a row. Yeah. And he's canceling out the surge. So that'll be. Paul's, see, Paul's got two, two damage, damage in, and I think he still has the, the bonus surge. Um, but we'll see. He's looking at his hand, probably trying to find a way to finish her off. Two damage is just not going to be there. She's going to need at least one more full attack. And at that point, her recovering one is actually might be significant. If he'd been able to do enough where she, she only has one or two damage left. Well, let's positioning see. advantage. Uh, so positioning advantage while attacking, apply one damage to the attack result. So it's just going to... That does oh, it. Finishes her off. Wow. Just barely enough. And I, that was a great play. Yeah. <laughs> positioning advantage. Um, I still think you're right that I would rather lose uh, Shiloh than a Bantha Rider, but yep. Paul does need to start taking down some of these big units. Yeah. And Shiloh, while not the biggest, obviously you want to probably take out Onar. Shiloh is definitely not... Yeah, not she's a, nothing to scoff. <laughs> no, you, you don't want to be fighting her very long. Paul still has Vinto as well, um, which is going. I think is going to be very interesting. I think he might play a key role here. Yeah, Vinto we saw last time has the potential to do a lot of damage just through all of his different abilities. And double attack as well. Yeah. He's not positioned right now, I think, to do a double attack. but. No, it looked like Paul was kind of trying to uh, protect, and he moved one of the weak way back to block off the thing. He moved another one back to protect mm -hmm. him completely. Um, but that's fine. Paul's going to probably get initiative next turn. Um, so he can set up Vin uh, Vinto at the end of this round so that Vinto can do a double attack next turn. So we have Greedo going now. Jumping right in the face. <laughs> Why not? Yep. I have a feeling Greedo's not going to make it. It's not not going <laughs> to last longer. too long. It's so not too bad an attack roll. I do not mind that. If I'm only rolling two green dice, I will take that roll. Gets a little more damage on Onar. Onar's down to five health. Which is a good place to be in. At this point, if Onar... Has Onar activated? He is not. Yeah. So if Onar attacks Greedo, it might be a little risky. Yeah, I don't, I don't think Paul... I, I don't think I would do that in Paul's position. No. <laughs> I think I'd rather try and get... Onar to uh, move out and attack one of the weak way that are kind of hanging out on the edges there. And it looks like Daniel's positioning Greedo to be as in the way as possible. Yep. <laughs> He's hoping Paul will attack Greedo, I'm guessing, just so he can get that one last attack in. Greedo's living up to his reputation of being annoying. <laughs> yeah. Looks like the judge is coming in just to uh, just double check something. Uh, probably just movement points or something along those lines. Daniel's explaining his, his turn. So right now, Daniel's up a little bit in points, um, thanks to Shiloh coming in and grabbing um, one of the objectives early on in round one, or late in round one. Um, otherwise, they both have defeated nine points worth. Um, it's still pretty close. Yeah. I think right now, Daniel has the advantage, I would say. I, I agree with you. Um, he's got a little bit more damage on Paul's characters, um, and Paul doesn't have the Bantha anymore, which while you kind of assume it's going to go down at some point, it went down before it could do much, which is pretty significant. Yeah, also Onar looks like he might go down very soon. Yeah. Dan is clearly concentrating on, he knows what he wants. He wants to take out Paul's big characters and then try and use the advantage of having more weak ways than Paul to try and uh, win this match. I think Dan... Daniel's also in a good position to start going for some of the stashes if he wants to. Paul looks a little more locked in right now. Yeah, it seems almost the opposite of Paul's earlier match where Paul was the one locking in and having an advantage uh, to go after the objectives, whereas now it seems like Daniel could go after that stash off to the left there with a weak way and 
Paul would still be able to go after him, but he'd have to bring his car his figures out and make them vulnerable to do so. Yeah, the advantage of Daniel opening the door right there is he has a lot more maneuverability at the moment. Um, Paul is going to have to go all the way around if he wants to get to the far back stash. Yeah, I see both players activate C-3PO. Paul's not activating him, but Onar probably needs to activate sometime soon. He's only got five health left, and he's focused. You don't want to lose that. Looks like he played planning with, um, what was it, Gideon? Yeah, I mean, Daniel doesn't have a lot of units left to attack with. He's using Gideon right now. We'll see if he can manage to get one last attack. I'm trying to see who the last I, I activation it, is. I believe it's Onar. <laughs> I think that was just a repeat of Paul's turn. Gideon planning. And, and he's using it to move on our, yeah. Yep. Get him into attack position. Mm -hmm. My guess is probably that Onar is going to move in and try and finish out, finish off Paul's. I don't know if that's... I don't know if he can. Yeah, I don't know if he has enough movement. But. So... Again, there are a lot of things blocking line of sight right now. Yep. So I'm, I don't think he can quite make it. I think he might no, have he enough. might. I think he can I don't, just barely. I don't know if he'll have line of sight to Onar. He might He might have to attack the weak way to Onar's left. But I, I mean, do that's think. That's still not a bad move. No, I mean, you're still. Well, focused Onar could almost certainly take down a weak way, um, assuming not a bad roll. <laughs> Looks like Paul's really looking at his command cards, probably it, trying to see anything that can uh, turn the tide in his favor right now. He's got a handful, so he still has lots of options. Yeah, and again, as we've seen in the previous matches, even when things look to be really in one person's favor, a well-played command card can turn things around pretty quickly. Yeah. Looks like, yeah, he's, he's thinking over him fairly deep there. I think he's got negation in hand. Um, and assassinate and maybe draw is hard to tell but he's, he's definitely got a, a number of um might have mitigate too he has mitigate in his list so it looks like he's activating onar right now so who do you go after with onar do you just go after greedo and finish him off and leave yourself open yeah i mean you could take him out there's the risk right now that he could die get eliminated anyways right. um, the hard thing with taking out Greedo is Greedo might be able to take him out too and not use an activation to do it yeah I, f I don't uh, Greedo doesn't have any focus or anything so he'd have to yeah. get five have damage to hit five, which so is definitely possible yeah two green die he'd have to get some good surges yep have to probably get like three damage and a surge I th yeah think? I think that might be the only way he can do it so he has a default of plus one damage so if he rolled two damage on each die or that will yeah that would that do, would it, do, it, do as well. it as well he's thinking pretty carefully of what he wants to do right now yeah I feel like his next couple turns are going to determine whether he has a shot at coming back or if um, if if Daniel's going to continue to take advantage and gain, gain the upper hand, rather. He's thinking long and hard. Like a true chess player, he's uh, keeping his fingers on the piece. So in case he moves it, then the opponent <laughs> can't say, hey, you took your hand off. That's all you're moving. Um, so this is, again, one of the reasons why the, uh, the final match is uh, an extra 40 minutes long. It's an hour and 45 minutes um, for turns like this where players know it's a critical move and they want to take a little extra time to think about it. Yep, it looks like he's going to attack a weak way fire it. I think that's probably the right call. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Changing his mind. Oh. Going after Onar. Interesting. Oh, he's maybe checking line of sight there. Seeing if he could. Trying to figure out how he could get line of sight to Onar. I think then he leaves himself vulnerable though. Uh, you can probably well, I mean, I think he's vulnerable <laughs> anywhere right now. Yeah, I'm just thinking on Onar, Onar is, yeah. is Daniel's last activated thing, and Paul's going to get uh, get initiative back, assuming no tricks. Yeah, and I think 
Daniel's Onar can certainly take out Paul's Onar right here. Um, yeah. And Daniel's is not going to go down full for this health. Attack. No, I mean this is a great attack, but seven damage that would take out almost half his health. But that's you know he's got 15, so Paul's considering extra plays. Could not see what he played. Going to re-roll the blue die. Look, definitely looks like he has negation in hand. Interesting. He. Uh, He's doing six, and he has a surge, so, so he could do another two damage. If he has the accuracy, which it does look like he has, yeah, he has the accuracy. He can sacrifice that two accuracy that uh, the surge would give him minus two accuracy. So that's eight damage. I mean, that's that's pretty good. Yep, he gained one by rerolling that blue die. Oh, looks like ended up being six. Um, interesting. Wonder. Oh, is C3PO there? So uh, C3PO, C3PO would was, cancel out the yep. surge. Yeah. So we actually, do you lose one? Yeah, he lost one effectively yeah. in that roll, which, I, I don't know, seems risky, but he didn't have a great roll to begin with. Here comes Onar swinging back. I mean, that's going to be enough. Onar. Yep. As expected. And then he's probably going to run back. Yep. Yep. So right now, Daniel definitely seems to be controlling the flow of the game. We'll see if Paul has a plan to to swing things back in his favor. Right now, it's not looking very good. No, he does have a couple activations to go. Um, one of them is Gideon, which isn't super useful. But then he also has, I think, um, is that Vinto that's focused over there? Yep. Um, yeah, it's Vinto. So he still has Vinto, which Vinto isn't going to have any good shots. But assuming Paul gets uh, initiative next round, he can set up Vinto for that pretty well. He could also, if he wants to, go after an objective for four points. I don't, I don't know if it's worth it. He'd be pretty vulnerable. Yeah, if Daniel has take initiative and Paul can't stop him, although I think Paul has negation, so um, I guess he doesn't have to fear that so much. The interesting thing is I do think if Paul can get into position here, Daniel's weak ways are a little vulnerable because they're just sitting there out in the open. Mm -hmm. um, the majority of them where he opened the door. The problem is Paul doesn't have any good line of attacks. I would have, I really would have liked to see him go over there with Onar last round. I don't know if it was the right call, but it would have definitely been interesting to see. Do you think if he'd gone maybe through the door earlier that would help him, or do you think it's just... No. Partially bad luck with the Bantha Rider. Yeah, I, I don't know about the Bantha Rider play. I think pulling that out so early might have been the wrong. I think that might have been the mistake if mm -hmm. if he made one at all. Do you um, think he should have waited until Daniel had put more units out in the center and then charged in with the Bantha? It's so hard to say because obviously Daniel's going to be careful about that. Um, the thing I didn't like about it was that he did it at the end of round one and Daniel was going to get initiative. Now, I think... We didn't see the card, but I think Paul tried to play take initiative to get it back, in which case if, if he did, that would have been a great play because then he could have gone around the corner and mm -hmm. run over Daniel's figures. Um, but Daniel had the negation. So it might have just come down to Paul thinking, you know what, I've got to take this chance um, and go for it. And he did, and it just didn't work out for him. Paul so. attacking with Vinto. Mm -hmm. Did some damage to the Weequay Pirate. Also, it's like bleed and um, second status effect. The second status effect is usually weakened. Yep. Um, and then he uh, he did the belt, uh, belt slinger, the bolt, bolt slinger on I don't know um, if we've seen weakened too much yet. We ha haven't really. Yeah, so weakened means that the Weequay will have uh, minus one surge when attacking and minus one uh, cancellation of surge while defending. Um, and then he'll discard that at the end of the next activation. So he's essentially weakened this weak way pirate a little bit, mm -hmm. both for defense and attack, which is pretty pretty nice for Paul. Especially, I think he put five damage on it too, so it makes it a mm -hmm. lot easier to finish it off later. Um, it looked like his second attack didn't do much of anything, unfortunately. Um, Daniel's playing tools for the job. We've seen that a bunch today, um, but it's when you declare an attack, add one attack to idea your pull which is super useful it's basically like it's kind of like a focus except you get to choose which is pretty awesome <laughs> gives you a lot more flexibility in which die you want if yep. you know you have range then why not add the red die yeah if you if 
you need range or you want utility, you add the green or blue dot, you know. Mm -hmm. Little attack took out, uh, I guess that it must have been with Greedo. No, it was Greedo. So Vinto took out Greedo in that last attack, and then Greedo used his last shot to take out uh, Weequay. So things aren't looking very good for Paul at this point. He's got Vinto and one Weequay. I don't know how he can win this against four Weequay, uh, full health Onar. Yeah, I mean, Java can attack, but it, it really it, isn't going no, to. No, if you're resorting to Java, you're in trouble. <laughs> um, Gideon can also attack, but isn't very good. C3PO yep. can't attack no, at all. C3PO is not good in that department. Use Gideon to move uh, the Weequay into position. Mm -hmm. So if you're Paul, what do you do here? Are you assuming you know. get initiative? I mean, you just hold out and try to attack. Try to take anything down as quickly as you can, I think. Sure. Hopefully he has some good command cards to defend. Um, hopefully he can retreat out of line of sight. He doesn't really have a lot of options. Yeah, I mean, he does still have a lot of command cards, so if they are useful, obviously, as you can see what Daniel's looking at, he's already spent six of his cards. Mm -hmm. Still has a couple in his hand, though, so it's not like he's completely vulnerable. It looks like Paul has six in his hand alone. Um, if Paul can take out a couple weak way, do you think he has a shot? If, let's say, he takes out two of the weak way, then it'd be like, oh, uh, Daniel's flipping tough luck for a black market. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it seems Black market, seems I don't tough. Has it had, I haven't seen Black Market have quite as big a play this time. It is giving Daniel the extra command cards. Um, I feel like even if... Trying to take initiative, and there's the negation Yeah, Paul. if Paul takes down some weak way, Daniel still has Onar. He still has... It's just... It's a little hard to see right now how Paul's going to switch yeah. around. Vin Vinto, I think, is really going to have to shine here. Yep. Um, with his double attack. Which we did see him shine in Paul's last match. Yep, and he's, he's already done a little bit of damage. I think he's going to be here, and he's going to finish off that uh, that one weak way. Yeah, and as you mentioned before, with the weak way uh, pirates there being pretty vulnerable, we're seeing Paul go after them right now. Yep. Yeah, I mean, they're not super weak, but against when you're, when you're throwing three and four dice attacks around, you do have... A slim shot at one shotting them, and if even if you don't, there's a good chance you only need to hit them twice. But they deal a lot of damage, so yeah, there's still another one behind them, too. Yep. That can then yeah, swing out and attack. Paul is playing, I'm guessing, um, surprise element of surprise since he pointed to where he had started. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we Daniel does not have a defense die out, so it's only three damage, it's not what he's hoping for, I'm sure. He's going to bolt sling the other one. So that's not the worst. Let's take one down. He's got one yep. more attack. And I bet he's hoping for a lucky roll here right now. Yeah, he's really got to take out a weak way now or else he's in trouble. That's, uh, that's not what he was hoping for. Not going to be great. Counting up things, looking at his cards. Could do three with Pierce two. Oh, he was it was enough to take him out, oh, and then he bolt slings three. another weak way. He played another command card. I didn't see what it was though. It looks like he's getting a second, a third attack. Holy cow! Oh, this on is, this. Oh, so this, this is, is what he needs right now. Yep. This. Oh, it's not a very good roll, but Daniel didn't roll very well either. But I don't think that's going to be enough to finish off the weak way, right? He's only got two damage on him currently. So he could do Pierce 2 or do an extra damage. I think. That only puts him at 3. I think it's just barely short. It's just a couple short, yep. Yeah, I think he already has 2 damage, so I think he's going to go up to 5. So he's 1, oh, 4. four and, and he chose to weaken him. He's going to run away a little bit. I think he's tr he cares most about Omar going after him, right? At this point. Yeah, I think so. Um, he's doing a good job of starting to swing things back. I still don't 
don't know if he's going to make it. If Vinto goes down, it's going to be very difficult. Yeah, he really needs one more round with Vinto, um, I think, at this point. So we have the weak wave, the last weak wave fire, just barely hanging on, attacking. Pretty good attack roll, but okay defense roll. Paul's checking his, his discard pile, trying to figure out what uh, what Daniel might still have in hand or at ready. Looks like Daniel might, oh uh, yeah, Daniel has tough luck earlier because he drew that off the black market. He's got two other cards in hand. Running back with yep. the weak way. Here comes the other one. Or, no, sorry, yeah, Paul had taken one of each, so yep. gotta wait to activate the other one. So at this point, do you try and come out with Jabba? I don't think it's worth it, but do you bother? Um, he could use, uh, spend the two victory points to order a hit, if possible. Oh. That's true. He, that's, that's very true. That, um, might, that might be worth it. He could, he could order a hit, although Vito doesn't have line of sight. He needs somebody to have line of sight at this point. He's the figure attacks first and then moves. Yeah, if he could get somebody in line of sight, that would be worth it. Yeah. Um, Jabba's attack is a melee, which... He only moves at a speed of two. Yeah. So for he's <laughs> to he's not going to get in. He can't. He would uh, probably be defeated before he yeah. made it over there. Uh, Jabba against some weak wave pirates it seems like a lopsided battle in favor of the pirates. <laughs> Paul's trying to figure out what to do. We've got a couple of figures, but it's mostly Gideon and C-3PO. Daniel moves Gideon around and focuses Onar. Do you think there's a chance that Paul will move up with Gideon at this point? He I really doesn't have very many <laughs> units left to attack with. No, I, I don't. I don't think. I mean, obviously, worst comes to worst, you do attack with Gideon, but he's so far removed. I think you'd yeah. rather just have him move out and help that weak way pirate or help Vito, yeah. Vinto. Um, here comes Gideon. Yeah. He's going to push that pirate out. Unfortunately, he can't focus. It's like. Let's either focus or move, yeah, right? And, like, and he has to. He wants to try and get out of Onar's line of sight. Daniel's getting set up to bring Onar around the corner and attack. Onar still has C-3PO to help him set up with Onar. He did use Gideon, but mm -hmm. I think as long as he has C-3PO, he still has a shot at getting the right position needed to go after that weak way pirate. Like Paul is trying to decide where to place his weak way. Just right. as a reminder that weak way does have four damage on it already, so it's not gonna. It doesn't have <laughs> too long for this world, assuming anybody gets a shot at him. Yeah, I mean, if you were Paul, how would you turn it around right now? Um, I think first I pray that Vento stays <laughs> stays on the board, <laughs> um, which that's actually. A decent shot at. Uh, Daniel has one damage and two surge. Um, he does have enough distance thanks to Weequay's natural accuracy, but otherwise that would be, he'd be hurting for distance, uh, for accuracy. Now it's Daniel's turn to check uh, Paul's discard pile. Yep. Paul's got a fair bit there now too. Still got like four in hand, I believe. Um, Paul has, I know he has um, I think he still has Mitigate and On the Lamb. Um, Junlin ter Terror, but Junlin Terror is going to be a useless card now that uh, the Bantha is gone. Um, Looks like Daniel's still considering if there's anything that Paul could play. Yeah. I think oh. he's, he's playing Mitigate. Oh, Mitigate. So there's Daniel's Mitigate. Mm hmm. Obviously trying to maximize. Reroll that one makes sense. Hey. Yeah, that looks a little better. That's much better. Uh, still not enough to 
take out Vinto, but obviously he's, you know, he just cares about piling on the damage as he still has Onar to go. Yeah, if, if Daniel can take out Vinto this round, he's going to be in an amazing position for the next round. Yeah. And Daniel will have initiative. Yep, yeah, as, as we suspect, Paul already played his take initiative. So if he can kill, if he can take out Vinto, the next round he can probably just sweep in and take out the weak way. Yep, and right that, away. at that point, it's pretty much game over. Yeah. Interesting, Paul is going after the uh, the victory points. He did, I think he did play on the lamb. Yep. Well, I mean, if you're going to retreat, you might as well yep. also get points more Yeah, that's, that's a good place to retreat to. Um, Onar still probably has a shot at him, but I don't think Onar's going to have to have a really good roll to take out mm -hmm. Vinto, at least this round. Um, Paul's going to get four points from that. He'll go up to 28. But that still doesn't seem like enough for anything. Yeah, I mean, Paul is in a better position than he was, but I still don't see how he's going <laughs> to take it. And he's mm -hmm. trying to figure out what to do. He's got C-3PO left to activate. Looking at cards in his hand, playing with him. <laughs> yeah, hopefully he has some good hand. cards in his hand. From his face, it might not yeah. be the case. Hands on his head is a bad sign. Don't know. Looks like maybe he's saying he wish he had activated Vinto differently. I'm not sure what that was about. Seems like they're thinking things over right now. Yeah, they've. This game has progressed pretty fast. If this were a normal round time, um, they might have to consider, you know, running out of time. But with the extra time allotted for a final, they have lots of time remaining. And at this point, Paul's willing to take a few, few moments to consider his moves. Looks like he's looking at Daniel's discard again, trying yep. to figure out what cards Daniel might have in his hand. Activated the weak way. Forgot that he had that activated. Now he's trying to figure out who to attack. Looks like he pointed at the weak way. Yeah, that one has full health, I believe. That's a decent attack, though. He's going to re-roll. That makes sense. All right, just piling on the yeah, damage. It's not a bad roll. Nope. Five damage, that's... That's puts him in a better position. He, I don't think, you know, with initiative going back to Daniel, I think he's still in a tight spot, but now most of Daniel's figures have damage on them, so given the right opportunity, Paul will be able to up. Oh, oh tough luck. there we go. So only three damage, but as I was saying, um, Paul does have a better chance at taking out a number of figures in one turn, especially with Vinto, um, when all of them have multiple damage on them. Um, Onar is still a ways away. I think he only has six, so he still has nine health. But yep. the uh, the weak way all have at least a couple, which puts them within range of a one one shot to kill uh, to defeat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Daniel's really going to want to try to take out Vinto if he can before he activates next turn, and then after that, really, Paul doesn't have much left. I think he still has one weak way, right? He's one weak way, and, and then Vinto. just support units. Yeah. Um, Paul Dan just activated C-3PO. Yep, that was his last guy. Daniel had activated C-3PO and uh, focused Onar. Clearly coming in. Oh, he's in. gonna go for the All stash. Right. It looks like he's trying to get as many points as he can right now. Yep. So he only will have to take out a couple of units of Daniels. Well, remember, Paul does have celebration. I don't, <laughs> the chances of playing it seem slim. Slim, but, but if he can, maybe yep. that could be <laughs> the deciding factor. Yeah, if Daniel makes a mistake, if, if Daniel goes after Vinto with Onar, which doesn't look like he's going to, oh, maybe he will. Um, but uh, Paul has a chance to use that weak way to finish off Gideon or C-3PO and play that celebration, potentially um, for the win, depending on how things end up. Interesting to see what Daniel does with Onar here. Yeah, I still think it's in Daniel's favor, but Paul is doing everything he can to create a slim window yep, uh, to win. He's m giving Daniel tough choices, which is all he can do at this point. Yep. T 
takes a damage to pull in the weak way. Also damaging the weak way slightly. And then throws a big attack. I don't know who he's throwing it at. Probably the weak way. That was the best defense die uh, Paul could hope for, but doesn't matter. That weak way had too much damage on it. Yep. All right. So Paul is going to get eight points here. Opportunistic to move in. Oh. Okay, no, he's not. All right, that was a great play by Daniel. So yeah. Paul's only going to get four points. So it'll put him at 28. I don't know if he's going to be able to take out I don't, enough yeah. to make up that difference. That was a really great. That was a great play by Daniel. Yeah. If Paul had gotten those four points, he would have had a chance. Not necessarily a great chance, but it was definitely yeah. a risk for Daniel if he had eight points. He's, he's closing off Paul's windows of opportunity, which is what he wants to do in this position. So I think they both used up take initiative and negation. I believe so. Um, they both played negation for sure. I believe D um, Daniel definitely played take initiative. We believe Paul did. Yeah, but it looks like Paul is not taking initiative. So I believe that is what he played earlier. Daniel looks like he's considering activating the weak ways. Seems risky at this point. I feel like he probably wants to use Onar to try and finish off Vinto. He probably won't be able to, but I don't know. What do you do if you're in Daniel's position to try and close out this match? I mean, even if Onar doesn't take out Vinto and Vinto takes out Onar, that wouldn't be enough to decide it for Paul. So I think Daniel can afford to take that risk. Do you, do you wait? Um, do, you, do you try and bring Gideon or C-3PO around the corner and um, boost Omar, Onar? Black market. Oh. Uh, I can't see what that is at the moment. It's one of his few cards remaining. <laughs> yeah, it looks like Daniel only has maybe one or two cards left after this. In his deck, yeah. He's got three cards in hand, one revealed, and only one or two left in deck. But, I mean, that's what you want to do. Uh, maybe that's on the lamb? Can't tell. I can't see the art. Yeah, there we go. Yep. On the lamb. On the lamb. That's, that's yeah, a big should, card. Yeah, he should go in, I think, and attack with Onar. Yeah, on with on the lamb as protection now, he's... Daniel's sitting pretty well. I would love to see Paul get the chance to play a celebration, because it's not a, a card you get to see used too often. <laughs> yeah, I'm still surprised he's running it. Here comes one of the weak ways. Yeah. I think I think he feels a little more confident about the weak ways now that he has on the lamb, so he can prevent Vinto from killing off one of them pretty easily. Oh, element of surprise. All right. All right. So that, that's going to help a lot. Yep. He's taking away uh, the defense die. He only has the two attack dice, but that's pretty much what you want, Three. as we discussed earlier. Um, Three attack and the surge. He can do plus two. Yep. He gets five in. And oh, that, that takes off it. Vinto. I mean, at this point, do you see any way for Paul to recover? No. At this point, Vinto was his last last hope. Um, I mean, he Daniel has three different figures that can do damage. He has Paul has Gideon, C-3PO, and Jabba. Yeah. Gideon's the only one who really can attack at this point. Yeah, Jabba's never going to get the chance, thanks <laughs> no. to his, his slow movement and melee attack. No, and Gideon isn't... Uh, the right faction, so he can't even command a, a hit with him. Right. And I don't even know if he would want to because he'd lose no. two points. At this point, I feel I like his best bet is to try and get to 40 points, but I don't, I don't, I don't know, know how he can. I don't see how he can. He could maybe run away into the rank. Or I don't. Yeah. I don't know. Daniel still has a uh, a weak way pirate to activate, Onar to activate. I mean, Gideon and C3PO to yeah, activate. Yeah, I just I don't see how Paul can turn it around right now. Yeah, Paul can pass a little bit to delay the inevitable, but in the end, he's only to get one figure to move last. And if Daniel plays it right, he can just contest all of the nearby stashes, so that Paul can't even gain control of any of them. Mm -hmm. like Paul is thinking. Yeah, I think I think he knows he's in a tight spot. Yeah, I mean, what do you do at this point in his position? Do you just try to get any points you can? <laughs> They're both kind of laughing. 
In a normal match, this is probably where Paul offers his hand, but since it's the finals of the World Championship, I think he wants to do everything he can to at least attempt to win. Yeah, I think he wants to play the best game he can. Um, I think he has to know at this point that it's, it's pretty much a done deal. Yeah. Looks like they're talking a little bit. Paul's thinking about He's activating C-3PO, I think. And C-3PO can't even do anything to Daniel's figures. No, C-3PO can only run away. There aren't any even, there's nobody around for him to focus, I think, either. No, he doesn't have, yeah. Gideon's not even close by. No. I mean, if he, could, if he could focus Gideon, Gideon might be able to take out one of those characters, but with three of them there, there's just no hope. Yep, he's uh, retreating with C-3PO. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like he is trying to run to the Rancor pit. Funny, <laughs> funny enough. This will be the first time we see anybody go into the Rancor pit if he does. Doesn't look like he has enough no. movement points. But that weak way pirate did activate, so maybe, <laughs> maybe he survives. Maybe, maybe he survives. Onar can just come around the corner, though. I mean, Here comes... C-3PO urgency. urgency. All right. <laughs> He's bringing his C-3PO out. <laughs> Just going for the stash. Dan Daniel's like not even going to bother trying to wipe out Paul's yeah. figures. He's just like, why, why yep. do it? Grab If he can grab all three stashes this, turn, this round, he wins. Um, Paul can contest. Well, he could have contested one now. I don't know if he even can with... Can Gideon make, oh. oh Gideon's, okay, so he is gonna contest <laughs> one of the stashes. This is, this is a crazy finish here. And this is the first time we've seen anybody go <laughs> Under the there. Rancor pit, yep. Oh no, we did see the Alliance Smuggler, I take, it I take that, that back. Yeah, but that was the different mission Yeah, that though, was a different so mission. A little different. Um, it looks like Paul's just trying to get any points he can. Yep, he's doing everything he can. But, I, I mean, he, so <laughs> this is this is living in, in dreamland, I think. But um, as, assuming this round finishes, mm -hmm. Daniel will get eight points, I think. I don't know if there's a way for him to contest the Rancor pit at this point. Um, yeah, I, I, I guess potentially with, with why Gideon. Why bother? I, I, he could. Yeah, he could use Gideon to move that weak way that he's using right now, but he's already moving the weak way just normally. I think he's just going to attack Gideon. Gideon, yep. He'll get eight points. And he'll be four away. Um, beating Gideon uh, is, just gives him an extra, just three points. So that's not enough. But defeating Gideon does remove Paul's only chance of f defeating a figure at this point. Yeah. So now he comes. <laughs> here comes Jabba. <laughs> <laughs> and the crowd goes wild. But I think this is the first time all all tournament that we've seen Jabba actually move. Yeah, not just attack. Literally the first time he's moved. Yep. He will have to open the door. <laughs> and then move two, <laughs> two more points. Four points. But he will make it to the next round. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's trying to start a Jabba chant here. Um, Daniel's just moving his figures. He's just saying, hey, like... At this point, I've got why, it. Why not? Yep, I'm just. I don't think Daniel needs to think too hard at this point about what he's going to do. No, finish the round, get to the next round, <laughs> and then win. I don't with Gideon gone. I don't think Paul has any shot. No. In in Dreamland, no. <laughs> in Dreamland, if Gideon had survived, perhaps he could have taken somebody out and got enough points to to play no. like celebration and win or something. But he would have had to take out either. C-3PO or... But then that would have been... Oh, no. Yeah, I don't, I don't think... Actually, <laughs> I, don't, I don't... Yeah, I don't, I don't think he had any uh, uh, absolute possibility. Um, oh. If he had take, He would have had to take Gideon or C-3PO, which wouldn't have been enough points to push him over the edge. He had to defeat, like, one of the weak way to get enough points over the edge, but then he wouldn't have been yeah. able to play Celebration, so... So, funnily enough, right now, Paul has 32 points, and Daniel has 39 points. It's one point away. Paul does have... In theory, if he had anybody left to attack, he had a, only eight initiative. points away. Here comes Jabba opening okay. the door. <laughs> um, even though he has command cards left, I don't, I don't I think don't, he how, can do anything. Uh, maybe if he has. 
he played no. he played assassinate earlier, I believe, right? Not that Jabba's even going to be <laughs> able to attack. So um, Jabba doesn't do a ranged attack, so he'd have to be adjacent. He has two movement points. He used an action to open the door. There's the hand. Yeah. So there we go. Daniel Taylor wins a second Imperial Assault World Championship in a row. 2016 and 2017 champion. And he defeated Paul Heaver, who was runner-up in 2015. Yeah, two times it, in a row. Um, <laughs> or 2015, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Paul, no, that's all right. Paul, Paul Heaver's runner-up twice. He's mm -hmm. just missing out both times. Um, it looked like, I don't know about you, but I, I still come back to that Bantha play early on. I think that was the deciding factor in the end. Yeah, Bantha play, and he had bad luck with not being able to take initiative. But, but I mean, it was a risky move. Yep. He, he, he kind of had to go for it. The longer you wait, the more chances you give uh, your opponent to actually draw a negation. So. He did every single thing he could yep, <laughs> to yeah. stay in the game. I, I, yeah. Um, if, if there was a mistake, it might have been the Bantha, but I don't even know. Um, it just seemed like Daniel the whole game. He, yep. just, he played, played perfectly, positioned well, and, you know, he, he had the dice did not desert him, which is nope. more than anyone can ask for. Yeah. Um, so welcome back. Um, I don't know about you, Gwen, but I'm tired after all these awesome matches. Yeah, I it was great fun to see. I'm happy we got to see Java move. <laughs> the final match. Finally, <laughs> yeah. he moves off his throne. I would have loved it if we saw him perform an attack. That would have been great. I don't think he was going to make it. No, sadly. Um, so I believe we're going to be interviewing uh, both players, correct? Yep, correct. Um, so we're going to step away for a minute, and then you guys are going to get to uh, hear what the players have to say, their thoughts about the game, and um, and you get to hear from both Paul Heaver and world champion, two-time world champion, yep. Daniel Taylor. So see you soon. Yeah. All right.